activities. And we have students here who are going to tell you about their experience this past summer. So um, this lady right here is Nina Shaw. She is the most powerful female attorney in the industry. And we had students working this summer that were legal students, they were finance, they were business, they were creative, they were PR, you name it, they were across all different sects of the industry. And so it was really you know, a phenomenal um, feat to be able to accomplish because a lot of times when you think of the industry, you only think of it in terms of the creative space, right? You think of writing, acting, directing, and producing. Um, or just being in front of the camera. But there's a whole infrastructure that supports the industry. So you need to see the industry more for everything that, all the opportunities that it can provide. Um, I'm gonna stop that because we're not gonna wait because it doesn't make sense. You guys can't see it or hear it. So, but, what's that? Yeah, yeah, it's online, yeah. Um, in fact, when we launched that, video uh, before our application period for this summer, within probably four days, it had over a thousand views. So I said, somebody out there cares about being able to be in LA. But the coolest thing about the program is that, number one, it provides you with housing. So who, you know, you need housing to come and live in LA for the summer. So that's a big component. And then you get a minimum of a $4,000 stipend for eight weeks, eight to 10 weeks of an internship. Now, most students made more than that. Um, it's just a matter of which studio, which organization you're with. If it's a 10 to 12 week, you're there 10 to 12 weeks. But we take care of your housing. So it's a fabulous, fabulous thing to do. You know, I tell them, you gotta feed yourself and you gotta Uber around town. We're gonna give you a place to sleep and we're gonna make sure you get paid. A good deal, don't you think? Absolutely. All right. So this, this is, <laughs> this is the group that um, showed up for the HBCU. We have a, the very first week all the students arrive. We do an HBCU Hollywood Welcome Week. So the different studios and networks will host the students for behind the scenes. And this particular day, we were at Disney, and Disney hosted an entire day of everything across all the Disney businesses. I mean, every part of Disney they saw. And in fact, they went into a very coveted area called Imagineering. And we learned later that people who work there don't get a chance to go back into that very secretive private space. And so we got a chance to do that. I mean, we met so many amazing people. It was a great day. They <coughs> fed us. We just had fun. So, um, and the students were like, I can't believe we're doing this. And I said, I can't because I pushed so darn hard. Uh, and I will do it until I don't have any more breath. So, um, so what is our mission? Create access and opportunity for you. Okay, that is at the end of the day, that's what it's about for me. How do I open the door for you? It's always important, right, that we allow people to stand on our shoulders. So I hope that the opportunities that we're able to give and the opportunities that you gain in this industry, even outside of HBCU in LA, that you always are a person that someone can stand on your shoulders. That is really what it's all about. Um, we're here to establish a diverse pipeline of talent. You know, we can stop talking about diversity if we can put you all, spit you all across the industry and put you behind the scenes, right? That's our goal. Uh, expose you to valuable hands-on work experience. And I'll let some of the students later kind of talk about what that hands-on experience looked like. It is really an immersion program. There is, I don't, I don't and, and I heard it all summer, there's no program like this. So it's great you can go and do an internship, right? But what happens with our program is that you, you go do an internship and you are dispersed between different companies. But we come together as a family. So we're all housed in the same place, right? And then every Thursday we get together and it's family time. It's time for industry professionals and leaders to come out and pour into you every single Thursday. And what happens with that? You network, you meet amazing people all the time, all right? Uh, we wanna provide a pathway for you to leverage and launch your career. That's what it's about. I don't want you to just be an intern and go home and I had a great experience with an internship. I want it to somehow convert into a job. And right now we have about six students that are actually living and working in LA right now. So, you know, we're doing our thing. The first year out, two students got converted to hire. So,
So it, it's, 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 it's working. Um, as I mentioned, intern to hire is our goal. So here at program highlights, you get career development and coaching. We will be at your side. We are there for you. Uh, knowledge exchange between industry professionals and leaders. You'll go behind the scenes. You attend screenings, panel discussions. There's a whole host of opportunities. Mentoring, guest speakers, and tons and tons and tons of networking. People always say networking is important, but I think you all have learned what networking really is now, right? Yeah. I mean, in, the, in this industry, it's a very small circle. It's who you know and who knows you. And you've got to learn to engage folks. I remember having uh, one student, like, I'm just not comfortable. I'm like, just go up and introduce yourself. You know, tell them, how did you get your start? You know, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. You've got to engage with folks and begin to talk. Because those networking opportunities are things that are going to reach back later on and provide an opportunity for you. I still have students today that will call me and say, can I use you for a reference or do you know anybody at this company? And then we put you in front of folks. Um, so leveraging. Uh, I always like for people to know what I'm talking about. Leveraging is not an opportunist and it's not a manipulator. Leveraging is about you possessing the knowledge and having the opportunity that's going to lead to promotion. All right? I, uh, Webster determines it, uh, defines it in terms of a lever. And I love it when I hear a word that moves and propels one into action. Simply put, leveraging is going to require you to engage, to get involved in the process. You cannot just sit there. Okay, so we want you to engage, get involved, and you will begin to leverage and move up the ladder. So now the industry, um, very tiny, tiny circle, all right? Everybody is trying to figure out how to get inside of that circle. So you're on the outside, how do I get inside of that inner circle? Internships. Everybody who starts out in Hollywood, intern, mailroom, PA, some sort of support role, that is how it works. And if you don't get in that way, you can send resumes to your blue in the face, but nobody knows you. So it's all about doing this, which is why when I started this program, I said I have to create an opportunity for students to come to LA, build resumes so that they can be marketable and they can launch their career. Other than that, we just keep giving you information, but we're not telling you really like providing the pathway. I want to provide the pathway for you to get inside of that inner circle. Statistics show that there are some 27,000 film school students that graduate every year looking to get a spot in Hollywood. So I say to you, how picky do you want to be about what job you get coming out? You don't. You just want to get the job. Okay? You just need to get inside because it's not about where you start, it's about where you're going. And only you know your talent, only you know what you're capable of doing, and there's nothing that can stop it if you're just like, if you give me the opportunity, I can prove myself. Okay? So I'll tell you about little Miss Oprah Winfrey. We don't have to say a whole lot about her, but I love the story about Oprah. Oprah's thing is that she always wanted to make the same amount of money that she was old. And she knew she wanted to be in the broadcast communication industry. Um, and so let's kind of fast forward. She's at Tennessee State. She goes to Baltimore. She gets a job at a radio station. And she's so excited. Now, she, she's 20 years old. She gets a raid. She's making $20,000 a year. She is so excited. And she and her friend Gail, yes, they have been friends a very long time. Gail looks at her and says, Oprah, can you imagine when you're 40 and you're making $40,000 a year? <laughs> we all know she was making a whole bunch more money than $40,000 a year at age 40. But that was her goal. I want to be in this space, right? She wasn't caught up with how much she was going to make, when she was going to make it, how fast she was going to make it. She just wanted to be in that space, and she was in that space. And she, I love what she says about success. It's just a magnifying glass on your personality. Who you are now just becomes that much more intense. You should always be growing from one level to the next, never stagnant. You're constantly learning, constantly pushing yourself, stretching yourself is what you have to do to succeed in life in any industry. This young lady you will not know, but she um, was an intern at Disney thought she wanted to be an editor, quickly realized that I don't want to sit in the edit bay all day, but it's okay, it's my summer internship, I'm going to finish it. 
Her folks told her to get involved in every single thing that they offer. Go to every networking event, be involved. And so one day she's at a networking event and someone walks up to her and he's a member of the production crew for Princess and the Frog. And he says to her, you would make a great princess. And she just kind of shrugged her shoulders. She goes back to her office and her boss calls her in and says, I just got a call from Mark Hinn, one of the lead animators. And um, they want to use you as the reference, which essentially means they want to use your image to draw the princess. She goes home, she tells her parents, and they're all going crazy like this is nuts. And just so happens that the VP of Post was, our, was their neighbor, and so she was like, you're going to uh, like have a doll and all these other stuff. So you know she's all excited. So she goes back to work the next day. They whisk her into a room. They start drawing her, photographing her, and she becomes the face of Princess Tiana. So when you see that little bun up and the little curl and the curl, that be her, all right? So I always say you never know where your internship is gonna land you. But the coolest thing about this story is that that's my daughter. Oh. <laughs> and I'm Princess Tiana's mama. <laughs> um, but you know, never in a million years, <laughs> never in a million years did I ever think my kid would be immortalized as a Disney princess. You know, do you know how many times I watched The Little Mermaid? On screen, on a DVD, all that stuff. We did all of that. And now here she is. So it's pretty cool. This is her just before the premiere. Um, they invited her to the premiere because all the artists and the producers said, you know, you are our inspiration, blah, blah, blah. And at the time, I guess they were having some trouble, like really kind of figuring out how to draw this character and they weren't quite getting what they wanted. And so they were really specific. They wanted to know like her curl that fell here and the one there, like, is that natural? Do you purposely see like, I just push my hair up in the morning and this falls out. And so that's what they got that morning. And, uh, but they wanted to be very authentic in terms of, you know, who she was and her image. And uh, they did a good job. So when I saw the big thing on the, the billboard, I was like, that's Jamie. So anyway, that's my Jamie. Hey, Chiku. All right. So let's talk about how you succeed. I'm just going to shout you out. Hi, Cole. I remember every, everybody. These were all my kids. I was Mama Stacy all summer, and I love the term because I gained 27 kids. Anyway, um, young adults, I should say. I'm sorry. Okay, so you got to have relevant industry experience, guys. That's what it boils down to. So whether you're getting it through film projects on campus, student leadership positions, things that you engage in. And by the way, these are all the things that we're looking at when we look at your resume, okay? So you say you're passionate about X, Y, Z, but nothing on your resume reflects that. So it's great you got a dream for it, but you got to do something, okay? And you got to show me you've got to do so that you've been doing something. Because what we do through that application process we narrow it down from 2,000 to 150 finalists. Your resume gets put into a book that goes out to the industry. And the industry is like, oh, I like this person, and this person lines up for this and that. And so they begin to interview, and then they begin to make offers. So, but we know what they want those resumes to look like. So I need it to reflect um, your skill base. You got to have talent. In this industry, there are a ton of talented people. So what is your talent? What is your gift? You have to figure that out. You know what you're good at. There's things that probably people say, you know, you're such a natural at that. It's probably somewhere where your gift lies, okay? But you gotta bring talent to the table. We, there's, there's not a lot of mediocrity in this business. Then you gotta have passion. You gotta be so passionate about what you're doing in this business, period. Um, I say it this way. If this is not what you were meant to eat, sleep, breathe, and do, then get out. Because this is a hurry up and wait business. Nothing happens overnight. It is a process. It is a journey. It is a marathon. It is not a sprint. But if you know you're passionate about it, then no one can talk you out of it. All you're going to do is just keep, keep pressing, keep growing, keep doing what you got to do. Then you got to have the ability to anticipate. No one should have to tell you what to do, when to do. You need to stay two to three steps ahead at all times. Constantly thinking ahead. How can I plug in? How can I engage here? 
How can I take a load off? You know, my day's pretty boring. Well, hey, can I help you do this? You gotta engage and stay plugged into what's happening on the team. Uh, and then you gotta be a workhorse. In this industry, on the corporate side, the hours are typically nine to six. Do you think anybody goes home at six o'clock? No. no. And if you're the person that's packing up at 5.45 because I've had a boring day of this internship, I had nothing to do, blah, 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 blah. I got my bag ready at six, I'm out. Guess what? You're the first person that they are gonna say, well, no, we'll pass on that one. We're not gonna offer uh, a full-time extension to this person. Because you need to be the first to arrive and the last to leave. That is your goal. They should have to push you out. Can I shadow? Do you mind if I stay behind and do this? You should always be that person that's willing to be there for the long haul. Then I tell people, become a student of the biz. All right? You got to know this industry. How many of you know by show of hands what the trades are? I know my front row knows, but y'all can't tell. So, see, we, got, we, we have to do that. So, in the industry, there's a language, there's a culture, there's an environment, there's lingo, there's terminology you have to know. The trades are the Bibles of the industry. There's nobody in Hollywood that does not start their day without reading The Hollywood Reporter and The Variety. So now when I say those two publications, you know what I'm talking about, right? But those are known as the trades. So if you're the intern, it's like, hey, can you make sure we get the trades? So-and-so doesn't have the trades. And you're like, oh, I don't know what the trades are, all right? Um, but you got to understand the terminology. Um, but read publications that are critical to the industry. Whether you're doing it online at like deadline.com, there's a synopsis.com, uh, there's a lot of different outlets. But you make sure that you're reading. I know the wrap is another one. Uh, and you can get these things in your mailbox. But you need to be reading this. Why? Because you want to know what's happening in the industry. What's the latest trends? Who's hot? Who's not? But the other thing is that when you're networking, you're able now to have conversation. You're able to talk about something, right? And particularly if you're interviewing with a company and you saw a headline recently, you know, I saw so-and-so and so-and-so. It just, it just makes you knowledgeable, right? It engages you in the process. So be knowledgeable, all right? Now this is an old publication, but I always show it because that beautiful guy is on there. And it always talks about the next generation. You all are the next generation. Okay, but in Hollywood, do you know where the next generation typically comes from? Talent agencies. UTA, CAA, ICM, William Morris Endeavor, you know, these are the companies where, and guess what these people are doing when they start out? They're working in the mailroom. They're pushing a cart. Do you know how many films I made? Do you know my, my film with the film festival? Yeah, but guess where you're going to start? Okay, so the people who are there, they're there and they are the ones that then go on to get on a desk and then they are the ones that are sitting next to the power players, they become power players. And it's all about networking, all right? So I show this because I want y'all to be the next generation power players. And in every fiber in my being, I am gonna make sure that that happens. You need to be power players. Y'all ready? Okay, y'all gonna remember me too, right? Okay. You can come speak if I need you to speak to somebody. Okay, got all that clear. All right. All right, let's talk about your resume. Now, I could talk on this for a little bit, but I'm not. I go over three basic things. Bless you, bless you. Um, so, as a recruiter, first of all, do you know how many seconds your resume gets in front of my eyeballs? Seven, I love that, seven to 10 seconds, okay? That's how long it takes to just size you up. But you know why it takes that short amount of time? Because I'm looking for your resume to answer three questions for me. Where did you do it? What did you do? And then how long did you do it for? If you can't answer those questions for me, it's like, oh, I don't have time. Because in the industry, we deal with volume. I may be screening 500 resumes for a position. So it's got to sing, and it's got to answer those questions, okay? So your date, your company, what did you do? And I always tell people, use bullet points. Don't give me no paragraph to read. I don't want to read no her paragraph. Just give me bullets. What did you do? What were you involved in? What were you responsible for? It also should only be one page. I don't want to see a book. I'm reading, remember, 500 resumes. 
Tell me about yourself. And your resume needs to reflect, hopefully, what the job is calling for. So if you don't qualify, don't apply. Because you know you're not going to get a call back, right? So make sure that your, re your resume is relevant to the job that you are applying for. So guess what that means? You're going to have multiple resumes. You're not always going to have just one cookie cut. You're going to have multiple resumes. It's going to apply differently, okay? So one page, bullet points. And then, guys, you have to use professional email addresses, all right? Professional email addresses. No more hotmama at gmail.com. Mm -mm. You got to have a good thing, all right? Um, what else did I want to tell you? I think that was it. I think that's it. I think that's all. Oh, no, that's it. That's it. I'll leave that one for later. All right, let's talk a little bit about the interview. Do your homework. Who are you going to go interview with? All right? Now, I have a story that's a sad story, but it was a student at Howard, and there was an executive at CBS that was so excited that this Howard student had applied for an internship with CBS. And she says, when, the, when she walked out to meet the young lady, hello, fellow bison. And she said, oh, you went to Howard? And she said from that point, she was like, dang, I'm done with her. She didn't even take the time to realize or research that she was even from. She was going to talk to somebody who went to Howard. What an advantageous position that would have been to kick start the whole interview process. So she said at that point, she was like, I'm just not even offering her the, the opportunity. So you got to, got to, got to do your research, okay? Know who the person is. And there's no excuse. You guys got everything on your phone, right? Know who the person is. Know the company you're applying for. Know their product. You know, what are they about? So when you have that interview, you're able to talk about that. So do, do, do your homework. Dress for success. Most of us know how to dress, but I always say this. It's business casual. That's always the safe side. If it's production, it could be jeans and flip-flops. But should you go in jeans and flip-flops? No. You do a step up, you do a collared shirt, nice pair of slacks, maybe a pair of tennis shoes on or whatever. You know, and, and those things are important because I know we had a young man uh, from uh, Morehouse that had moved to LA. We put him on a temporary job at DreamWorks and he showed up with his bow tie and his shirt and he was all, and so they said he's great, but can you tell him he doesn't need to wear that? So. <laughs> So it's very important to understand, and each studio and network has a different culture. So when you go to interview with someone, there's nothing wrong with asking that recruiter, um, you know, what's the dress code for this department, you know, and they will, be, they will tell you. So there's nothing wrong with that. So know that because it speaks to whether or not you know their environment and their culture, okay? But dress for success, I have a five jewelry rule for ladies. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Anything more than that? is too much. If they so big and they bangle and they make noise, it's distracting from you. So you don't want to do anything that pulls away from you. I always say they shouldn't see anything they ain't supposed to see. And then for guys, no wrinkled shirts. We can tell if you just try to like press it. No. Press it off. Black belt. Black shoes. Be sharp. That's all Mama Stacy gonna say on that. All right, bring your resume. Why is that? Because a lot of times you guys do things electronically. Right? And you think, okay, I'm going to my interview, they already have my resume. Always bring a hard copy of your resume because you never know. You could be interviewing with that person, you may not be the right fit for that opportunity, but they may have something else in mind and want your resume and then they pass it on to someone. All right? Or HR never got it to them and they're interviewing you sitting in front of you and they don't have a resume and you don't have a resume and you can't talk effectively from your, uh, from your experience and you botch the whole interview. So don't do that, all right? I also want to say this. If you get the interview, that means that out of hundreds of resumes, your resume has surfaced to the top, and they are interested in you. And not just to do a feel good and test the waters and see if they might like you. No. It means that you're qualified. They have too many people to see to mess around with folks who aren't qualified. So if you get the interview, just know that I am qualified, all right? Now, the other thing about your resume, don't bring a different resume than what got you the interview. 
All those extra things that you may want to add, those are talking points during the interview. Is there anything else I should know about you? Yes, additionally, I was had an opportunity recently to be a part of blah, 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 and I did this and I did that, and they're like, oh, oh, oh it's all good. And they're talking to you, and you're making a connection, and whoo, just might happen. So don't do that. So keep those things in mind. Then listen more than you talk. Some people just want to get in there and start yapping. Mm -mm. Sometimes I can't wait for those yappers to get out from in front of me. So statistics show that the people who allow the interviewer to conduct the actual interview, those are typically the people that get the job. Not the person that just rambles on because they're nervous and all those other things. Bring some effective communication skills. I also say look them in the eye. I mean, don't get creepy. You know, you can look away every now and then. I don't like them when somebody like, no, you said look me in the eye, I'm looking you in the eye. Don't do that. Um, but bring your effective communication skills. We know you come from a great school. You've written highly structured papers. Give us your best, okay? So if you've got a thing where it's um or you know, you like, none of those. And then bring some personality and enthusiasm. And I get this sometimes even when I go to campus. I'm like, they're like, wow me lady. Um, they sit across from me and I'm like, look, I got a job. Do you want a job? You know, so it's like, who are you? Show me you want this opportunity. So let them see your personality and who you are. Um, so yes. <laughs> I keep looking at you because your video, oh my God. I was like, this girl has to get an opportunity. Um, I saw your personality. I saw your enthusiasm. And, and that's what we want. So people say, you know, what's like the best, what were you looking for? I'm looking for that. I'm looking for you to convey to me that you're the person, you want this opportunity. Okay? Last, relax. You don't have a job anyhow. And the worst thing that can happen is you walk out and you still don't have a job. But you didn't have it in the first place, right? So people get all uptight, they're all nervous, they're shaking, they fumble over things, they re-shake your hand, it's clammy, and I'm like, ah, oh, they lose the job. So just relax, right? Because I told you, you're qualified, that's why they're calling you, you did your research, you're good to go. What they're trying to do during the interview is decide, are you the person that I see on paper? That's what they're looking for, okay? And are you a fit for my team? That's really what it boils down to. So, I want y'all to sign up for this program. How many of you want to come to LA this summer? A lot of people. If all y'all come, we don't have room for no other schools. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. Uh, but at any rate, and also because I want to make sure that I, I am a green person, so here is my info. This is how you reach me. And I would love for you to drop me a note, stay in touch, um, info at ecop.org. Okay, so all you got to do is put an info in front of that E-I-C-O-P dot org, um, and that's how you stay in touch with me. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Beautiful. Um, you guys can also follow us at EICOP HBCU. And I just want to say to you guys, like, I had so much pushback from some of my industry partners because they didn't like me having HBCU because they wanted to make it look more, you know, inclusive. And I, and I got that. But there was something about when I launched this program that I wanted to be an HBCU specific internship program. Because for years, the industry has sourced this talent from some of the most select schools across the country. And it has not typically been HBCUs. And so I said, look, what I want to do is shine a spotlight on these institutions and the talent that they have produced in their rich 150 year history. So what we have done for the past two summers is knock all the blinders off and everybody is excited. And so I'm getting calls. I want an HBCU student next summer. I, I'm like, okay, I got you. I got you. So, um, so right now we are, we've got companies that are pushing us to expand this program into New York, um, into Atlanta. Uh, we're doing some stuff.
this fall uh, with CNN and they want to do something again in the spring. So if any of you are part of the chain of emails, I think we sent something out recently where CNN is looking for people again. Um, but also on our website, there's going to be all the links available. So if, if you're interested in CNN opportunities, all you need to do is just email me at that email address and I will send you the link, okay? Um, but they are definitely interested and want to uh, tap into you all's amazing gifts and talents. So with that being said, it's time to move to the next phase, which is going to be our panel discussion. And uh, yes, oh, wait a minute. Let me go back, go back, go back. I just said I didn't get to play for you guys my music because I like my music. I do. But that's all right. When you're in L.A., um, I, will, um, I will play it for you. So... Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we'll do six. Take that back. Okay. Um, Ted, are you here? Who's that back there? Oh, I can't see y'all because the light's in my face. So come forward. I want you guys to go first since you're here. Stage lights. Okay, so we probably going to have to. Okay, so that must be what he's talking about. Go on. Well, he 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 told me just put that on. Okay. Yeah. He told me the same thing. I want you. You guys scoot down one. Right. You're sitting on the panel? Ted's sitting on the panel? Oh, yeah. Move down one. Move down one. Oh, move down one. Sit here. So, don't get in there, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Come sit right. next to me. <laughs> oh, my God. Does it work? All right, are we ready? Look at that amazing panel. <laughs> okay, so um, we are, first of all, I want to, uh, I'm going to start with you, Jay. Okay. Okay. Um, we have a very special guest all the way from California, from Disney's uh, television, uh, an television animation uh, division. And so uh, Jay is vice president of current, current series, current series and diversity and the diversity program. So veteran, lots of years. I'll let him tell you about himself. He does a better job than me. I don't like to read people's bios because, you know, sometimes it's way too much. And so Jay, tell us about your wonderful self. And then I'm going to go down the row and I want you each to tell, say your name, where you intern. And then I'm going to come back with some other questions. And then, Ted, you'll do an introduction of yourself, too. Okay? And by the way, guys, this guy right there with the, all the gray, I like him like that. That's my husband. <laughs> all right. So now that we've squared away all that, we're going to get started. So, okay. You might have to grab the mic. Sit down. 
Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> You're gonna have to excuse me. I came from LA with a cold, and someone was nice enough to bring me orange juice. So thank you <laughs> very, very much. <laughs> that was a nice surprise. Um, um, as Stacey said, my name is Jay Francis, um, Vice President of Current Series and Diversity at Disney Television Animation. Um, you guys are probably aware that Disney is a pretty large organization, so to the degree that we're going to have any sort of chats today, I will be happy to try to take off my Disney Television Animation hat and answer more questions about Disney more broadly, but I do represent the television animation side. Um, Anyone familiar with Gravity Falls, Phineas and Ferb, DuckTales? All right, <laughs> happy to see that. So my job is I oversee shows like that. Um, I am not an artist, I am not a writer. I look for writers, I look for artists, but basically my job is to be the eyes and ears of um, everything that we do that gets the show made, from that original premise and script, to the storyboard, to the casting, to the music, to the uh, rough color animation to if we're ever going to put characters in the park all of that information at some point comes through our office um, to sort of vet through to make sure that it's on brand that it's on model and that it's sort of following the um, the original development of the series so I got my start um, um, I'm not going to give you the year because that will date me um, but I've been in animation for a, a good long time and um, um, I went to school in Syri at Syracuse, uh, grew up in Boston, and um, I've been working at Disney for 12 years now. So um, um, as we sort of go along and sort of s discuss the industry in general, again, I'll be happy to try to answer questions that don't rely on my Disney helmet, but um, Disney is a great place to work. Um, <laughs> And I just feel like on the animation side in particular, there's some very specific um, things that we look for. And um, I'm also planting seeds on, if, for, for those who may not think animation is part of the entertainment business, it is, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, hello everybody, my name is Cole Mason. I'm a junior here, and um, this summer I interned with Warner Brothers at, um, through the Entertainment Industry Outreach Program. Cole Mason. Would you pull the mic to you? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. My name is Cole Mason, and I am a junior at Howard University, and I interned at Warner Brothers. <laughs> in what department? In the Worldwide Television Marketing Department, doing uh, television research. Hello, everyone. My name is Maya Brown Edwards. I'm a transfer junior majoring in broadcast journalism from Kansas City, Missouri. And this summer, I interned at Live Nation in their diversity and belonging department, focusing on communications and social media. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Smith. Uh, this summer I worked for MTV and VH1 in their current series department. Um, I also worked in casting. Hello everyone, my name is Ashley Ferguson. I am a senior broadcast journalism major from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and this summer I interned for Sony Pictures Entertainment in their development um, department. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but I'll probably speak more on that. Did you? Me? Yeah, you, you, you okay. told you to skip. Hello, everyone. My name is Ted Milner. I'm an intern for my wife, Stacy. Uh, it's basically what I do. She tells me what to do, and I just do it. Um, but my background is I'm a former professional baseball player for the Angels, the Cardinals, the Astros, and the Cleveland Indians. And while I was playing in the minor leagues, my wife created a business called Executive Temps. So for 30 years, we've been running Executive Temps. And what I do on a daily basis is employ people within the industry. So there are many people that we employed over the years that are now EVPs, directors, vice president, production, research, uh, original programming. Um, basically, we, we give people jobs. So um, Stacy wanted to create a program that would extend to you guys because we saw in the placement that we were doing that there weren't many of us. And then she also saw the track of how we weren't getting in. And so she created the program, and it's, it's just incredible. So we're really, really happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, Ashley, I'm going to throw it back at you. Um, you were, um, so you should tell them a little bit about development. What is, okay. what was your job yeah. in development? Okay, so just by a show of hands, does anyone know what development is, film development? 
okay a couple people so film development that's literally the first step of making a movie like it's the idea so there's maybe there's a script that needs to be turned into a movie and a big uh, studio turns that into a movie and finds a director to attach to that or finds a producer and so my job throughout <coughs> the summer was to read tons of scripts um, and to see would this even be worth making a movie so I'd go into the, d the executives offices and say oh this would be a good movie or I could see this person playing it and things like that so that's development literally developing a story and seeing a movie start from the beginning and get snowballed into um, you know huge blockbusters and it's a very difficult department to infiltrate so I'm really blessed that I got the opportunity to do that yes yeah so <laughs> how many of you uh, and in development and I know a lot of times people want to be development is the coveted creative area that everybody wants to get into but it is the toughest space to get so the fact that we got uh, a student into that space was incredible but the thing that that gets you in is that you have to do script coverage and you had to submit some script coverage right yeah so how many of you have done script coverage okay so script coverage is important all it is is a big book report okay it's a book report it's a breakdown of the story the characters so forth and so on but it's something that they want you to do um, and maybe Jay you can speak a little bit to that because I'm sure that you deal with that um, quite a bit in your role yeah definitely well <coughs> let me start by saying I started off in development at Disney and um, I'm now in current series and I am so thankful <laughs> <laughs> to be in current series um, development is very challenging um, uh, for a whole host of reasons but yeah I mean my interview process is, is Disney was crazy because uh, I think I had to I had to give coverage on scripts which is again to your idea about a book report is basically uh, reading the script and sort of taking it apart piece by piece but really coming from your own sort of standpoint of what you feel is working with the script and what you don't think is working and it's not from necessarily an ana analytical point of view a lot of what we do is instinct and sort of gut feeling to a certain degree yeah there's you could look at a script and see there's structural problems with it and what have you or the dialogue doesn't seem to um, in our world relate to a kid 6 to 11 but what's working about the script when you read when you read a script um, when you watch a show even what's working for you are you connecting with that character does that character seem real does the story make sense do the characters interact with other characters in a in an organic way is it funny is it entertaining uh, just the sort of basic you know are you laughing at the right places are you crying at the right places so um, in terms of how we hire our assistants at uh, TV animation uh, it starts with that you, just the idea of can you sort of look at this and give some give some notes because on my side of the business that's basically what I'm doing I'm giving notes on premise outlines scripts I'm giving notes on storyboards I'm giving notes and, and they're not always written sometimes they're verbal but I'm, I'm, I'm giving notes on every aspect of the process so your ability to communicate and sort of convey what this idea feels for you is a very important part of what we do. Excellent. Lauren? So, Kent, you had a very interesting experience this summer. Um, so why don't you share um, probably something you're very proud of that happened this summer? Um, okay, I did so much this summer. So... Um, to talk about the casting okay all right so um technically so in, like guess what okay, I did. okay. <laughs> technically my department that i was supposed to be in was current series so um my daily tasks were to like look at so people would come in and do pitches every day for mtv for mvh1 for shows um mtv and vh1 merged uh last year uh under Viacom so the people who work for VH1 also work on MTV shows so I would look at like pitches all the time people would have like their pitch books and um, I would basically be the second look for the department so I would go in look at them if I felt like there was a story that uh, they should look at that they didn't think that they should I would go in to the executives offices and I would tell them why I thought that that pitch should be looked at again 
Also, I worked in casting. Uh, uh, luckily enough for me, the casting lady for um, MTV sat on the same floor as me, so I would do a lot of things with her. So um, one of the first things I did was uh, she asked me to um, get Playboy Cardi's uh, manager's number or their contact information, and uh, I happen to be a little connected in the industry, so I was able to find her number in like under 20 minutes. And with that, she went to the execs um, of MTV and she told them. And like the next day, I came to the office, and uh, the VP of the, um, MTV's current series, dep series department called me to her office, and she was like, "That is so great that you did that. Um, I want you to do casting for." Uh, uh, it was a true life episode, so I did that, um, and I got to call the people and uh, pitch her to the VPs, and then I got another project. Uh, they ended up doing a show with Lindsay Lohan, so the day, this is a, like a, sorry, I'm talking a lot, but uh, so they decided that they were doing the show with Lindsay, and they had a whole cast. Uh, two days before, three days before the show was supposed to uh, start shooting in Mykonos in Greece uh, the I guess the director of the show was like I hate this cast uh, get rid of them all and figure it out uh, so the casting director of the show came to me in a panic and she was like Lauren we have to find six girls uh, to cast and send on a plane to Greece in two days please help me find some people so I reached out to a bunch of people I knew and uh, a lot of them they didn't like, but they ended up picking one of the girls um, that I picked uh, to go to Greece and shoot the show uh, with Lindsay. And she ended up being like one of the stars of the show. And they were like, Lauren, you saved the show. Like, we're so happy. Uh, so, yeah, that was probably my proudest moment uh, casting the girl for Lindsay's show. Um, but it was just it was a great I experience. Got I got to do so much stuff. It's so <laughs> crazy. I got to like do the Basketball Wives like reunion episode. I uh, got to sit on on like so many shows like behind the scenes. So it was just a really great experience. Oh, and I got to pitch my own show to uh, NTE. So that was cool. That's awesome. Great. <laughs> so Cole, yes. what was different about what you maybe ex thought you were going to experience at Warner Brothers and the division where you work? Okay, so I went into my um, internship basically with only the description that I was given, like research in terms of what is that, what does that mean? Um, and basically, I, I saw in the bio said you use systems such as Nielsen systems. They do TV ratings. Um, and excuse me. Other than that, I, I, I didn't know what research could really consisted of, other than I knew I would be probably at a desk and probably reading a lot and researching a lot and doing a lot of analysis on these shows that they, they do and outsource and, well, not necessarily outsource, but they um, send overseas and, and use domestically. But basically what, I, what it came to is I learned probably a tremendous m amount more than I than I thought I would have in this position um, about the business and about how shows are marketed, how shows stay on air and how they get taken off air, how pi pilots, um, you know, are received and and just the fact that they barely pilots barely make it and pass the pilot. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, what my job also consisted of was. Um, you know they make decks of their se of the shows, like the performances from maybe like the U.S. and all these different, let's say France, um, London, wherever else it plays, and they go back to the executives and show them the numbers basically, um, and depending on how those numbers are and how they're performing, then you know, you can take them off there in that, in that country, or if they perform better in one country than the other. Um, like, I, I believe it was Lethal Weapon. Um, in America, it's not doing, it, I mean, it did, fair, it did okay, it did fairly well, but in like France, it was like, for a period of time, it was their number one show, um, such as like The Mentalist and certain things. But um, I just thought it was very, very interesting. You learn a broad spectrum of like, <coughs> of, of basically, I, what I'm interested in is, 
interested in is writing in direct and and I eventually went to direct but I learned basically how if I were to write a show pitch it all this and get it from and, and actually create a pilot I learned how I'd be able to create that pilot and then keep it going for years for, so that it was definitely something I I uh, did one regret and I think it was a great leeway into the industry excellent so Maya you, she got an opportunity with Live Nation, um, and they were a new partner this summer. So, talk a little bit about. And you were on an interesting side because you were on that corporate social responsibility side. And but, you know, the culture and the environment there. If mm -hmm. you can just talk a little bit about what your role was. Um, with Live Nation, as I said, I was the um, diversity and belonging intern, and I focused on social media and communication. So what I did was help develop a social media plan for their employee resource groups. Um, I developed their global hashtag. Live Nation is a billion-dollar company, and so all their ERGs is, are going to be using a hashtag that I created. Tell them what ERG is. Um, employee resource groups. And, like, you have B Nation, which caters to black employees, Live Nation, Hispanic, and Asian Nation, Pride Nation, and stuff like that. And that's basically what I did, and I also assisted with event coordination. Um, I actually helped create our very first event uh, that partnered with ECOP, and um, I created a deck for that, which is like a presentation PowerPoint, created the questions that the panelists would answer, assisted with organization of the name badges, just a bunch of little stuff. But mainly I focused with social media and um, communication and company culture. Very good. So, uh, Jay, um, I, I heard you say in the last, when we were over at Bowie, that you kind of stumbled into animation. So you, can you talk a little bit about your journey there? How did that happen? How does one who is not an artist, you know, find their way into an executive position and those sort of things? So, um, so this was, I'm going back a little bit here, but this was before, when I was on my job search, um, when I was coming from New York, and I didn't know a whole lot about LA. You know, like everything that I knew about LA, I'd seen on Beverly Hills Cop. Um, you know, <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference between Hollywood and Beverly Hills, for, for that matter. So, um, you might need a microphone. For you. Right. So this was um, this was right after I graduated in the sort of the mid '80s, and. Um, I went out to LA because I wanted to get a job in the entertainment industry. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, um, but I just I went where the jobs were. And uh, at that time, you had a choice of New York or in LA, and I just felt LA was probably the place for me. But I wasn't really sure. So, but I knew I just I needed to go to the place where the jobs were. The idea of just sending a resume or just trying to make a phone call just didn't make sense. At that time, there was no internet to sort of upload your resume to. There was no cell phones. You know, I had my resumes, I had my maps, and literally walked around town. And that was one of the things that I did not know, that LA didn't have public transportation. <laughs> there was no subways. So uh, that was one of the first things I learned. Uh, you know, for me, it was, okay, I don't know what I want to do, but here's where the jobs are, so let me just go and try to put resumes where the, where the jobs were. Well, um, the actual day that I, the animation became such a big part of my life was um, I was in Hollywood. Uh, I was sort of looking at my map, and I found a place called Studio City. I naively believe there's a lot of studios in Studio City. <laughs> Why would you call a place Studio City if there were no studios there? So, got on a bus. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with LA, but if you go on a bus in Hollywood and you're going into the valley, Studio City, you're going over a place called the Coanga Pass. In 1984, if you made that trip on the bus, the first major studio, the first major company you would see um, was Hanna Barbera. And for me, you know, it sort of just dawned on me that, wow, cartoons. I hadn't even thought about that. But one thing became clear to me, that these guys have more on TV than anyone else I'm going to be putting a resume to. So um, I got off the bus, I walked into the front door, and the woman there, who will never know how she changed the course of my life, said, oh, no, 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 we're not hiring. We're not hiring. But two companies are always hiring, and she named off these two small little animation companies, Deke and Ruby Spears. From that moment, I now had, what I heard in my head was like, always hiring? 
It didn't matter what it was. It was like I heard always hiring. And um, I went to one of the, I couldn't find one of the places. I went to the other place and ended up getting a production assistant job there. And I'll never forget that even then, when I got that job, I was saying to myself, um, well, I'm, I'll take this, but I'm going to, as soon as I get a real entertainment job, I will, I'll, 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 I'll leave here. And I never left. And, you know, I've been a recruiter. I've been in production. I started in production. I've done all sort of aspects in the, in the animation business because there are jobs in the animation business that don't require you drawing or writing. And it's a business, and it's a production company, and there's administrative people, there's music, there's casting, there's producing, there's production management, there's production coordinators, there's assistants, all of these different aspects that, um, that, that make the studio run. So um, from that standpoint, uh, the, the reason I sort of told this story, especially as a recruiter, is that you, know, you guys have this you guys have all of this great technology and you can send resumes from wherever you are in the world and you can there's still something about face-to-face -face communication there's still something about uh, interacting directly with people because I will say to you that I have I have met a lot of people through emails I have met a lot of people who have sent me information um, I meet a lot of people face to face, and those are, and 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 when it all, when it's all said and done, those are the people that I remember, good, bad, or indifferent. Those are the people that I remember, and those are the people who stand out. So, um, I, so that was my sort of stumble into the animation business, not because I had a very specific idea of what I wanted to do. It became a thing with me where it was the it it, it fulfilled my creative juices. The people in animation were fabulous and we didn't take ourselves too seriously we were making cartoons for kids you know it was great and I never wanted to leave and it just for me it just sort of shows just like if I don't go out there and do it that way I may have thought back in Boston oh Hanna-Barbera let me send a resume there it would have been a resume that just handed up, ended up in a pile um, I went there I got this information and I ended up getting a job there so um, I think one of the elements to that is sort of to, you know, go after it. If you want it, be passionate about it, you need to go after it. Know that you have tons of competition who are going after those same jobs. So what's going to differentiate you from them? If somebody is, if somebody is like, if I've met somebody and someone's introduced me and, and they've come in and I've met them, that's going to stick out in my head, you know, versus the person who might have that impressive resume. Um, but I've not met them, but I, and I don't know them. So um, that's just one piece of advice that I can offer up. That's great. And that's why I want to do HBC in LA, because I got to get you in there. They got to know you so we can have jobs. So um, I want each of you just to kind of share real briefly um, what was your biggest takeaway, and maybe you can share that, or you can share. What was your favorite Thursday session? Ooh. Wait, good. with HBC and LA? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Can I go first? Yeah. Okay. My biggest takeaway? Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm, my biggest takeaway, I want to do both. So my biggest takeaway, one, was you have to, you really have to put yourself out there. Like, you have to take a leap of faith at some point like you can't just stay where you are stay in your bed at home looking at what people are doing on Instagram you know at some point you gotta just delete the app at first of all and then apply like apply for every internship you want to apply for and get your stuff together so that you can be where you want to be so that's how like when I was in LA I was like wow I can't believe I took a leap of faith because nobody in my family had just gone to gone and lived in LA for like a couple months so yeah I almost I almost didn't apply because I thought I really wanted to just stay in D.C. And I was like, let me take a leap of faith and do what I really want to do. And so it kind of changed my life. Um, and the next thing, I think my favorite Thursday panel session was um, the head of casting of ABC was there at, um, 
at the school that we stayed at, and her name's Io Davis, and she just, she was there, um, a whole bunch of other people were there who I wanted to know. Like, I literally have been dying to meet her, I've been trying to email her, and I met her in person, literally talked to her face to face, and I just know she's going to remember me. I also met, like, someone who worked for her, and we literally emailed back and forth all the time. He was like, I'm going to set you up in with, for meetings in the fall if you really do want to pursue acting, things like that. So, it's... It was pretty cool meeting her, and it was a pretty life-changing experience. So those Thursday sessions, amazing, popping. <laughs> um, I would say my biggest takeaway, um, and one thing that I like do all the time now is I keep in touch with people. Um, like before this program, like I would meet like a whole bunch of cool people because I've had like internships before, um, but. In LA, like it's just really important to stay connected with people, and like you never know, like who can help you in the future, or if you can help them in the future. Um, like that person could not even be like in your field, um, and like they could like just know somebody that might be able to help you. Um, my favorite Thursday session would definitely be the same one that Ashley was talking about when Kenya Barris came, uh, the creator of Blackish. Uh, I like my plan. Or after I graduate is to go to LA, um, and there's like two directions I want to go in. Like go in, I either want to like go and like work for a company, or I want to like be on set and like get a mo get on a movie or get on a, a TV show, like behind the scenes. And when I saw Kenya, I was like, I just want to let you know that uh, next season I'm going to be working on your show. And he was like, Okay, cool, yeah. And I was like, Yeah, I'm just letting you know now so just remember my face uh, and then he was like yeah we're gonna I'm gonna make sure that you guys get contact information um, for me so I got his contact information he was like email me uh, he told me like when uh, they're taking interns so um, I'm definitely gonna like stay connected with him um, so yeah like I know the creator of Blackish like that's crazy and uh, I love that show so yeah Ted what was your highlight of the summer. <laughs> I haven't asked you any questions. Sorry. I'm sorry. Well, my highlight was being my Lord. Was it? Yeah. Uh, look a little cold. He just needs someone to love him. <laughs> <laughs> he just uh, let me out. But I, I, I just. Wow. Oh, oh, Ashley and all the other girls. Sorry. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. But um, I, uh, I just enjoyed being a vehicle to uh, for God to use us to provide opportunities for you guys. <clears throat> you know, because I know when I grew up, the hope I didn't have, you know, and I, I know in your hearts that sometimes you're, you're, you're really wondering, can I do it, and is it possibilities or opportunity, you know, uh, and and we've just been blessed to be in an opportunity to, to really change some people's lives, and so uh, it, it is, it is, it's just overwhelming to, 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 the, the experience they had, and I know the depth of that experience because I was there with them. I remember when Stacy, HBCU, was a thought in her head. Like you guys had thoughts <coughs> and dreams, it was a thought in her head. And we couldn't get an HBCU to even respond to us, including Howard. Couldn't get him to respond. <laughs> to respond. <laughs> yes, I'm you weren't supposed to say that. <laughs> She's going to get <laughs> But, but that was in the early, <clears throat> early, early days, guys. But now, now we, we can, not only can we go to any HBCU we want to, we're, we're adored. They're almost, please come to the campus. And so when you provide opportunities that these students have had to intern, to meet the Thursday night, and you get, no one said anything about the BET experience, which oh, yeah, is, yeah, that, that, was, that was like crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> and, and it was connections from people that I had employed in the past that are now executives at, 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 um, at, um, Jesse Collins. at Jesse Collins Entertainment and the relationships that Stacy had, that they just, I mean, red carpet, really. I mean, the kids that come from USC, Stanford, Yale, they don't get what, what these guys got. They don't get it. And so their lives are forever changed. They have an entree into the industry. And so, you know, I'm always thinking about how do I give you the information that you need? So independent of me, independent of Stacy, you have an avenue and a path for, su for success and for your dream to be fulfilled. And so I want you to hope tonight. That, that's what I want you to do, like they did. And I saw them transform. So that was, that was my greatest takeaway. That's good. I like that's that. Beautiful. Uh, I'm going to have you two switch with these two. 
Bye, Lauren. Bye. Yes. Um. Okay, oh, it's Maya. Oh, you, you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, oh wait. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think a lot of them were, the BET Awards was super big for me. I was really excited. Like, we were waiting to even go in. So even before the magic started, Boris Kojo walked right by me, and I almost <laughs> fainted. Like, it was really, like, a big deal. Um, and I loved Miguel, and we got to sit in on his rehearsal, too, so that was super cool to me. Like, I loved it. And um, also just being on Paramount's lot, there were so many people um, that were just there. Like one of my friends, like the one day I didn't go to the calf, she meets Issa Rae in the calf, <laughs> getting her food, trying to eat pizza, trying to live her life, and I missed it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jay Ellis walked right by us as we're leaving um, Paramount one afternoon. It was really, really random. Um, and the guy from This Is Us who plays Jack Pearson, I got to see him and I love him. It was great. <laughs> um, and my favorite Thursday panel had to be the one with Ricky Minor. If you don't know, Ricky Minor is a musical genius, and I love him. And it was crazy. He actually played the footage um, from the Kennedy Center, Honor Kennedy Center Honors that the gospel choir had been a part of. So I thought that was really big um, because it was crazy that I was there and he was there, and he really connected with that. That was awesome. So I guess my most memorable moment is kind of similar to Laura's. I'm like, I liked everything. Like, I liked all the events we went to. Um, I would say, uh, I guess being, I worked the BET Awards, so I was a PA for um, talent and casting. So seeing how that worked, just seeing how um, Robbie Reed, you know, she's a very um, leading casting director um, within the industry. She worked a lot on Spike Lee's films. So seeing her work, just seeing her, what she does, it was just very admirable. I was like, wow, you know, being able to see how talent goes, how they cast people, I thought that was interesting. Um, you know, I was at B I was in BET, so like she said, she saw, I see Boris Kojo every day because he worked at BET. So so um, it was like, you know, like, wow, like, it's, it was just so, like, surreal, like, the experience. <laughs> um, and my favorite Thursday, I liked every Thursday. Um, I would say meeting Mitzi Miller was probably my favorite Thursday because she was, um, she was basically the former uh, editor-in-chief of Ebony Magazine. So um, when I was little, I used to read Ebony and Jet all the time and just reading her editorials. Um, you know, when I was young, you know, being able to meet her, like, I was like, wow, you know, I've, I've been reading about you, like, for the longest, and, you know, I kept in contact with her, um, to this day, I'm email, I've been emailing her, and she's like, yeah, okay, yeah, we can just chat, and, you know, maybe sometime if I come around, you know, you, like, we can go to coffee, you know, it's just so, like, wow, like, that was probably one of the best. Shows you how touchable everything is, right? Yeah. It's really <laughs> about, um, and Jay, you could probably speak to this in terms of, you know, how people get their start and why it's so important to just get in on the inside. Yeah, I mean, the very simple reason is it's a lot easier to maneuver when you're on the inside than it is on the outside. You know, that first job you get, whether it's at Disney or wherever it is, may not be exactly the job you wanted, but if you somehow manage to get on the inside, you now will have access to um, people and places and things that you never thought you would. And again, it goes back to sort of the personal interaction. You know, it's going to be a lot easier for you to find that person who works in the division that you want to work in and, and strike up a relationship or a conversation with that person so that that person can then sort of help you along. Uh, so, you know, the idea of what you want to do is great. You should always sort of have that. But the goal here is to get in. And if it's at an assistant level, if it's at an entry level position, grab it because there's a lot of people who would gladly take that. And again, when you're, once you're on the inside, then it's up to you you know once you're on the inside at that point it's up to you there's not a whole lot Stacy or I or anyone else can do for you at that point now it's up to you in terms of your skills your talent how much do you want to be passionate about the job you're working at and how do you want to sort of maneuver uh, to get to get to the place you want to be once you're on the inside and I'm going to throw you another question. What are the key skill sets that are necessary to be an executive, a vice president of current programs? And even development, I mean, because, I mean, the, one's a longer process, one's a shorter, right? But yeah. what are those key um, skills? <clears throat> well, you know, that's a challenging question sort of coming through the route that I came through. But obviously, from the standpoint of, you know, the skill set of being an executive is the same skill set 
that Stacy sort of talked to you about in terms of even getting in. There's that sort of ability to communicate, that ab ability to, to collaborate, the using your um, smarts, using your, following your instinct, being professional, being courteous, uh, being transparent. Uh, the biggest thing that I look for when we're doing any sort of hiring, especially when it comes to entry level or assistance or even internships for that matter, I would always bring up the issue of trust. Can you be trusted with something? Because the moment that a project's given to you um, and you do it well, there's that sort of building block of trust there. On the assistant level, just the idea of being able to trust an assistant with making the job his or her own and knowing that if I can, I have plenty to do, if I can give you something and um, that person can handle it, or better still, cut off a problem before it even gets to me. And then they come to me and say, hey, just want to let you know this happened, but I took care of it. That's the biggest thing in my world that sort of makes me feel like, okay, this person needs, uh, this person needs some attention. You know, because this is a person who uh, is going out of their way to make a statement in terms of what he or she wants to do um, and wants to be a part of this company and wants to, you know, uh, wants to be counted on. And that's how you sort of move up. You know, the getting in in terms of what type of job you're looking for, and especially on, in, in my, in, on my end in animation. You know, I look for a lot of the creative folks, so there is a talent base, whether it's portfolio or writing samples that comes with the territory. But, and, th and that obviously that's necessary, but everything Stacy put up on the presentation in terms of whether it's the interview, whether it's, you know, once you get inside, the skill set, all those things, they all apply to, um, to working in probably any industry, but in, in particular the entertainment industry, just because, again, I can't emphasize this enough, the competition for these jobs, this, this, this internship program, it's gold. I, I, I can't express it anymore, the opportunity that you guys get if you make it into this program, it, it's gold, because I never did that. At the last presentation, we sort of were asked, what would what would my what would I tell my 20, 20, 20 years old self right now if I could, and it was taking advantage of at my school taking advantage of my career services department. I never even bothered to check in with them or see what type of connections I could make before I left school, so that you know when I got out of school I just didn't even know how to go after a job. I didn't even know really how to craft a resume. I didn't really, I, everything I was doing was on sort of gut instinct. And there was a whole department that would gladly help me with that. And oh, by the way, when you get to LA, you should contact X, Y, and Z person because we have a, we have a strong Syracuse alumni base out in LA. I never bothered because I just wanted, for me, I just wanted to be out in the work world so much that I didn't take advantage of what the school had to offer. So that would be something to also consider and think about in terms of um, setting you up. Very good. So I'm sure you guys have some questions for us, right? I think we've kind of talked about all the little points. So I would love to open it up for you guys to ask a few questions. Um, and if you have questions for Ashley or Lauren who are sitting here, they can pipe in or whatever. Um, oh, and there's a microphone over there. So if you have a question, you guys should line up over there and you can ask a question. If you want to. It's up to you guys if you feel comfortable doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Stacy, could I ask one? Yes. Hollywood, especially now, there's that uh, sort of whiff of me too -ness. Do you have any advice for young people if they should encounter that kind of atrocious behavior? Yeah. Um, you know, immediately go to human resources and let them know what has happened because they are the overseers and they will go to the department, they will make the address, they will deal with it, but go to someone in HR immediately. 
um, go to your direct report. If it's your direct report doing it, you know, you're going to HR anyway. But don't, for sake of, oh, I, I want to keep this opportunity, or maybe I should just look the other way, no. You need to go to HR and you need to say something. Yes? Um, okay, so this, this didn't happen to me like, in LA, but um, I work on set a lot, um, which is like on movies and TV shows, and um, if you're a PA, like, I mean, obviously, like, if you're working on like a set, like a big set, um, like a movie, you're not going to be like a director or like a producer or anything like that, so, um, and all of those people have like protection, but as a PA, technically, you're not a part of um, like a... I don't even know what it's called. You're not in the union, so you don't have any protection. So I know for for me at least, what happens to me at, um, a lot is uh, sometimes like the camera guy will like try to talk to me, or like somebody on security will like say make a comment towards me, and like especially from girls, you guys need to make sure that you shut it down immediately. Because if you don't shut it down immediately, they will continue to do it. And like if it continues to happen, like obviously you can go to like the director or the or the producer and let them know what's going on and they'll handle it. But as a PA, technically like you don't have any protection. Like you don't have any HR. So girls have to be very, very like strong when you're on one set you need to make sure that you're very clear about what you're there to do. You're there to get your opportunity and to get to the next level. You're not there to, I don't like talk to the producer or like the camera guy or anything like that. Yeah. So be aware of that if you're working on that. Same thing. What do you mean for, what, what Same do you mean? thing. Guy, I mean, it, it goes both <laughs> ways. Amir, get up here. Um, it goes both ways. So, you know, it's not just the female side. I mean, it happens on both ends. But again, it goes back to the to the watchdogs for the studios and networks and different entities, right? There's always folks. Um, you get to sit on stage. How are you first? I'm doing good. <laughs> Have a seat. Right down here. Um, but that is my advice. Your biggest um, protection is you. If you don't say anything, nobody knows. So just say something. Um, and then, you know, you know what's appropriate and you know what's not. And, you know, it's a fine line. It's a delicate situation. But HR is usually your best resource. I think that's a good workshop someday. Lauren could share good diplomatic at first ways to say, sorry, not me. Yes, <laughs> or exactly. And the other thing is that what? We, people treat us the way we allow them to. Right. So if you're a person that, you know, people used to always say to me, like, Stacy, like, uh, there's a very difficult boss of my boss whose name will remain nameless, but very difficult person. But they would always say, Stacy, he's so nice to you. I'm like, yeah, because I don't play that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was very clear about, you know, the boundaries um, in a very respectful way. But I think it's how you carry yourself and it's how you present yourself. So all of that plays in. Next question. Hey, Good question. Um, I had a quick question on terms of placement of the internship. So is it based, is the placement into the internships based on like strict interest of the interns or is it like more so like a first come first serve? Is it just like the industry like entertainment um, organizations that come to you guys and you place them accordingly? Like so it's, it's based on the different opportunities that we have across the board from our different industry partners. And then there are obviously, you know, you in your application, there are certain jobs that you are highlighting, that areas and categories that you would be interested in. And then your resume, it needs to line up somehow with those in order to be, for you to be presented for those particular areas. Okay? Mm -hmm. Hi, sorry, please excuse my voice. Um, what co sort of experience did y'all have prior to your internships and like, um, specifically like how are the organizations that y'all were involved with and things that were on your resume? No. 
So I'm going to speak from a different perspective. This was my first internship, so I just happened to land at Paramount Pictures, but I was heavily involved here at Howard University, so I was a part of the Howard Gospel Choir, her campus, Jumpstart for two or three years beforehand, um, and just making sure that my grades were up to par and things like that. Um, but making sure that you're a dedicated member, that it's not just sitting on your resume, um, those things were helpful. Um, and because I was doing photography, I had a business beforehand, so I put that on my resume. Um, so they were, it was very easy to see that I loved photography and that my writing was somewhere there and that I was very organized and um, a lot of the skills they needed, I was able to provide. Um, well, for me, um, I had a bit of internships before. Um, I was actually just, well, I was in Atlanta interning with two different production companies. So I did a lot of PA work. Um, like Laura said, I joined different organizations um, basically to help me cultivate my writing skills, in which I want to be as a writer. So I, you know, I wrote for The Hilltop. I wrote for a digital magazine called The Odyssey Online. Um, I wrote for just different like uh, magazine platforms, so that's what I did. Um, yeah, I was in diversity and belonging, and I focused on social media and communications. Um, they wanted a writer, so I wrote for a publication called Fresh HBCU, and I was able to get featured in Teen Vogue from that. So I highlighted that, and we bonded over that with um, in our interview actually, and then I also write for HBCU Buzz, and so I highlighted that, and I had that underneath my belt. So, and I, I was also a marketing uh, brand ambassador, like, that helped connect um, agencies to diverse talent. Um, I didn't have, like, organizations, because I am a transfer from Howard, but it's just, like, stuff that I did outside of school, that's what I capitalized on, and that's what got me the internship. Um, I did transfer into Howard a year before last year, and, um, let's see, I joined Spotlight, um, School News Network, um, doing videography for them. Um, I also joined, well, I was also a part of um, Professor Martin or uh, in the tech center. I also was part of his team. We shot um, like the kind of like a, a speech for, for incoming class of 22 students um, with um, President Frederick. Um, I also was, a, was involved with student council and um, Adopt a team as well. Uh, for me, so last fall I was uh, a press intern job for Bernie Sanders, and then from there I was a like executive slash shot collector intern for the for NBC Sports Group for the Olympics, and then on the Sony. And then now I'm actually at CNN through ABC in LA. Like, she kind of that she was the connection for that, but. Um, before I got all these like internships with Rolling, because I think it started with um, the Bernie Sanders one. Before that, I had like small unpaid internships and I just hyped up my resume a little bit by like the wording. So I think the wording was what really just like started moving things around for me. Um, like, because I didn't have relevant experience with Sony, but I said for being a press intern, I also did video and that like played into being a production and development intern. And that got me an interview, and then I talked about my experiences, and that kind of how I don't know. They loved you. They they created a position. They were like, Stacy, we're going to get her in here. They said, I think we can get her a development position. I'm like, really? Now, she had had another position that we were kind of going back and forth, and she was going to have to turn that one down to take this one, but she took the right one. My resume was pretty hefty before I got um, the PCD internship. Um, I worked through Comcast for like four or three years. Uh, I've been on a lot of like TV shows. Um, I don't know. And then so I worked for like a production company here also. So like I had like relevant experience. I think one um, thing that I would recommend that everybody um, does is uh, because me, I've worked in like various different parts of the industry, so like the business side, the creative side, like if you have like this one, um, like 
major resume where you just have all your stuff. It could be like three pages, two pages, just like everything that you do. And then each time that you submit for something, you just copy and paste like the relevant like four things or three things that you've done um, to create into that internship. That's what I do because I just have so much stuff that's not relevant to everything that I want to apply to. That's good. So for me, I think it helps. Well, first you have to you have to introduce yourself. And you have to tell us where you intern and all that kind of good stuff. Thank you. So hi everybody, I'm Amir Dunstan. I'm a junior finance major, television and minor from Buffalo, New York. Um, this past summer I interned at Live Nation Entertainment with Maya. I was in the HR department, uh, specifically compensation. I was a data analytics intern. My freshman year before this internship program, I interned with the Office of the Council of the Currency. And so I dealt with a lot of data, so I think that's, that hurt um, me around this internship because of the similar way we're dealing with a lot of data and a lot of the cell work. And then as far as on campus organizations, I've done the professional organization um, called the Middle of Washington Carrier my fall semester here and then my spring semester I joined the professional business fraternity at the Kappa class. And Again, like Ashley mentioned, I know a few of them, um, don't just be a member, actually participate in the organization so that you can detail leadership experiences, so even if you think you fall short in an area that you're specifically applying to, they can see that you do have the initiative to go back to the community and you do have, uh, you know, great leadership quality that can help balance out maybe you not having too much experience. So I think my combination of having some leadership experience on campus with the previous internship, which was related to this one, that I was able to get, um, help my application. And then also being authentic. Oh, I forgot to say, like, different words I was involved on campus. So I'm like Lauren, the Youth of the Social Club, member of the office chapter of Delta Sigma Theo Sorority Incorporated, and um, National or Howard University Association of Black Journalists, and Spotlight. I think all those things. If you are in organizations like that, you can be like a historian. Like, I'm a journalist and corresponding secretary for Delta and LSU. So, like, PR to LSU. I love so you hear the commonality, right? So there's leadership involvement on campus. You're engaged in this campus. Because if you're engaged here, then you're going to be an engaged member of the team out in the industry. So, and then they, they're involved. They're engaged. They're doing something. Um, they've got some type of work experience and smart enough to use whatever they've done that maybe isn't a traditional job, but then beefing it up and making it apply to the internship. So all those things. Something one more time. What Ashley was saying about resume. You have um, to put that oh, mic sorry. in front of you. What Ashley was saying about resume, I remember when I would talk to industry professionals and they would also tell me to use buzzwords. That was there. They was like use buzzwords, you know, because you're gonna have so many people applying like thousands of applicants and you know they they go off of certain words that you use you know so you have to use those words pertaining to that um, internship that you're applying for as far as videography the experience you have with editing stuff like that so I wanted to pinpoint that as well um, we're going to get it through a lot of questions so we'll wait um, but Jay I just want to ask you so you heard that question so if a student is in is applying for an internship with TV animation this summer what would you say would be, is there anything different than what they've said that you would look for? Yeah, I mean, again, in terms of if you're looking specifically, we get a lot of art interns, so a lot of that falls under the portfolio, portfolio category. But let's assume for the moment that that's all locked in, what have you. All these things that I'm hearing about are the sort of same things. You're active, you're... you're you're, you know, to me that what's that show? It shows leadership. It shows collaboration. It shows uh, the ability to juggle a whole lot of things at the same time. Those are all sort of the um, uh, things that we w we would look at because look, the reality is we, with the assumption that you're a college student, we're not looking for a whole lot of real life experience. You haven't had that yet, so. <laughs> What are we, you know, what are, how are we going to monitor this? So these type of things are absolutely the things we would look at. Next question. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, so I have two questions. One, 
Um, are you guys really looking for like freshman applicants? Because I know like it's like a big pool, and so so like freshmen even like you know should they like wait you a You should bit? apply. We had uh, freshmen to graduate students, and so what happens is is different industry folks are saying, you know, I want somebody who's you know just started school they don't know what they want we're going to put them in a rotational program we want them to understand all the different aspects of the business that they could potentially think about a career in so on those ends they usually want the freshman sophomore um, but it's just across the board so it is open to all students okay. yeah and even students who recently graduate uh, most of the companies up to six months post graduation you're still eligible to be an intern all right. Um, and my second question is for y'all. How did y'all like balance your like work life and your like social life in um, LA? Since like that was a new area for y'all, how did y'all like navigate that? Lauren, answer that one. It's <laughs> 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 everywhere. <laughs> it has to be a short answer okay, though. Okay, great. So my social life was great. Um, I hung out with every single celebrity, uh, <laughs> except for Beyonce. <laughs> I had to crack the whip a couple times with her. <laughs> um, yeah, it was great, but it, like, it really helped with my internship because, like, I mean, like, Lil Yachty, like, came in, like, after, like, helped out with that, and then, like, I saw him, like, later on, like, the next, that week, and, like, we, like, connected, we were, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, it was, my social life was great. <laughs> <laughs> How did I balance it? It was easy. You just, <laughs> 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 You know that you gotta wake up in the morning and go to work. And be on time. time. So you just do that. If you were out all night, it's like you still wake up and go to work. <laughs> um, go to work. And I say, I saw like, my boss all the time. That's how. Yeah. But at MTP, they were all like doing that. So it, was, it worked out. I would, yeah, I would just say capitalize on like weekends because you're gonna be working a lot during the week. So like weekends, you know, if you wanna go hiking, you can go hiking. <coughs> Go do that, go see like the Hollywood Walk of Fame, like those right in Hollywood, but there's so many things to do. So every weekend, try not to stay in the room, like do the churches, all that stuff. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to give you all the realistic version. <laughs> um, we were working a lot. It was 9 to 6, Monday through Friday for most of us. Some of, well, we ha some of us had summer Fridays and some of us didn't have summer Fridays, which is when they give you like a half day um, and you leave around 1 or 2 o'clock. Some of us were still there on Fridays to like 6 o'clock in the evening. Um, the weekends were our time really to like get out and go see things. I know when I first started working at Paramount, off the bat they were like, for 4th of July you have the 4th, 5th, 6th, and I planned accordingly. I was like, I'm going to see as much as I can see in those three days and that like five day weekend. Um, and we got to see a lot of things and a lot of the, uh, the program had a lot of things planned for us. So some of that time was doing networking events and other things like that, but we were able to manage our time fairly well and be able to see all the things that we wanted to see. Hello, my name is Autumn Wooder. I'm a sophomore television and film major from Atlanta, Georgia. And um, I was wondering, um, I heard a lot of different job descriptions and positions that you guys experienced this summer. And I heard a lot of the things you guys were expected to do. Um, and a lot of that is stuff that I personally have never been able to do before. Um, so what would you suggest, and this could come from professionals or from the people who experience the internship, what would you suggest um, working on during the school year, perfecting the craft of, um, or building a resume of, I know you were talking about the book report for the scripts. Um, what are things like that that you would suggest looking into becoming better at? Ooh. Okay. Um, I feel like just doing your research is really important. I feel like doing a lot of that beforehand, especially depending on what place you work at, a lot of the things my supervisors were talking about were movies that had been filmed like way, way back. And some of them I hadn't seen. And so during my interview process, they were like, make sure you watch this movie and make sure you do this. Um, but some of the stuff, they just had to teach me. And I had um, great people who were um, very flexible and they allowed me to um, mess up and make mistakes and go ahead and fix those mistakes but a lot of the things were 
spare of the moment. There are a lot of things that you can't necessarily prepare for um, because I was their publicity and photography intern, but I was also their part-time assistant. So I was doing like her statements and like balancing things for her and like she was giving me more than the job description and sometimes you just have to adjust. Um, but it was great because she entrusted me with all that stuff and she felt like I was able to pick a photographer and find somebody who was out in the UK who I'd never met, you know, and um, they just give you more. So. Sometimes you just can't prepare. You just have to kind of go with it. And I would also say that, you know, again, I mean, you're in school, take advantage. You know, it's about be educating yourself. Learn about the business, right? Engage, get involved. All those kind of wonderful things is what you have the opportunity to do now and position yourself. Every summer you should be working, doing something towards what it is you think you want to do in the future. You just have to do that now. Plug yourself in, whether it's through clubs, organizations, volunteer, creating a, a new group on campus, whatever. Get involved and start building your resume now. The thing that happens and the sad things that happens is that people are like desperate and it's like, it's the ninth hour. I don't have any of that experience. Well, it's a little late. So that's why you utilize career services. You go to them, you get involved and start building your resume now. My kids, as soon as they got in college, it's time to start working on an internship this summer. You're going to do something. So that's how you do it. Thank you. You're welcome. You want to add something? You know, just put those restrictions on your resume as far as you know, what it is that you're doing in a volunteering opportunity. That would still be, you know, beneficial to future opportunities. And I think what all of you guys should do, you guys should do this maybe through career services or whatever, you guys should share samples of your resumes yeah. so that your colleagues can see. Um, you know what you did how you describe what you did because that language is very very important to getting you even in the door right so that's a good thing that, that you guys should do next question uh, so my name is Maisa Riker I'm a public relations major from Baltimore Maryland uh, my question was just how you guys feel like your majors play into you and like we're able to support you in your internships And I would just add this. In the industry, there are so many people working in the industry that do not have a television film major. They don't care about your major. Who are you? What have you done on paper? What are you qualified to do? So sometimes people are like, oh, well, I didn't major in that. I want to change because I, I don't think I can get a job. What's your experience? That's what we're looking at. You know, I mean, obviously there are some areas where, you know, that plays in and that's important. But by and large, like, there are a lot of people in Hollywood that are lawyers. There's a lot of people that run the business that, you know, were, um, who I think the lady from New Line Cinema was a history major. You know, so it, it, it doesn't matter. It's like, what do you want to do? And what skills are you equipping yourself with? What experiences are you putting on your resume? So, uh, I mean, I'm sure that what you get from this institution, because 
I saw it firsthand that students that you guys are learning some amazing things to be able to translate into a job. Um, so you take those resources with you because I'm sure at some point they're going to play in. And I just heard the, uh, the background from Candace about how she, her career just total different theater major and, and then she's doing all these other things. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank you. Excellent. You want to add something? So you need a mic. Um, oh, Ted's moved. <laughs> so I just wanted to follow. <laughs> I just wanted to follow up with what uh, Mrs. Milner was saying, because I was actually a finance. Well, I am a finance major, so I'm in the school of business. So I thought I wouldn't even. It was going to, you know, be more difficult for me to land the opportunity, but because of. Um, like Mrs. Milner said, they experience, um, you know, what skills do you have and, um, you know, uh, what prior work have you done? That was a, that allowed me to land the internship I had. And I think because I was a finance major, which is the irony in that I thought that would hinder me, it actually helped me because it went directly with being a data analytics intern. So, And that, to me, um, just exposed me to all the various opportunities that exist in entertainment. So it was very beneficial. Next question. Hi, salutations, everybody. Uh, <laughs> my name is Andante Petit Home. I'm a film communications major with a minor in theater arts from Durham, North Carolina, by way of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, I'm a casting intern here in the DMV currently, and this is my senior year. And I noticed that she, I remember Miss Milner. You you had stated that there was uh, a couple students who went through the program and got jobs right after. Um, I wanted to know that maybe since the companies get to choose on who they're interested in is there a possibility let's say like hmm you let's say some student was with the company with something that they wanted to try out and then they also got a job from them but they wanted a job doing something else how what is to ensure that someone is able to get the job that they're looking for well i mean that's a part of your journey uh, in terms of you know launching a career yeah. we don't always start out exactly where we want to be yeah. but it's about going through the process and the journey to getting where you want uh, to ultimately be so you take that first opportunity that comes along mm. if, if I'm hearing and answering the, the question the way I think I heard him say it but you take that first opportunity that comes along like we have a student right now it's like oh no I don't know why I took this job with an agency I just did the same for me I don't know if I can do this so, but I'm like, you need to stick it out. Yeah. You need to do a year, get a year under your belt because it's, it, it's just going to be good for you. It's going to bode well for you. So you muster through, mm -hmm. you learn, you develop, you grow, you get some thicker skin. And then at the same time, during that course of time, you're hopefully networking with other people, you're seeing other opportunities, and you know, you segue to the next opportunity. That's, that's just how it happens. So there's no guarantee that you're going to go from this to getting exactly what you want. That just does not. I, there's no formula for that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Hi, all. Uh, my name is Troy. I'm a TV and film major, a senior <coughs> TV and film major, um, playwriting minor from Chicago and Detroit. Um, and my question for all the interns was, um, I know that a lot of you had a lot of prior experience going into your opportunities, but um, I find that personally, even going into an experience um, with a lot of background, there's a certain amount of anxiety about um, really being qualified and like prepared for what people might ask you to do. Um, so I guess I wanted to know what you guys' experience was with that and maybe how you might have dealt with something that you felt like you weren't necessarily as prepared for as you might have liked to be and um, how that experience went for you. I'll let one, maybe two of you answer that. <laughs> so um, during my internship, I was at the desk like every single day. And, um, you know, being at the desk, it's like secretarial work. I did a lot of that. So I'm, can you all hear me? I have to speak louder. Oh, okay. Sorry. So I was um, working at the desk, like majority of my internship, so I was answering phone calls, doing a lot of secretarial work, creating documents, script coverage, all of that, and, um, you know, working at the desk, I thought, oh, this would be easy, you know, You're just answering phone calls. I didn't know how to work a phone. I was just, like, answering the phone, had to do conference calls, all this other stuff, Bluetooth. I was like, what 
<laughs> like I was just so overwhelmed. So, um, you know, in my supervisor, she would always be like, you know, she, it, I could, it was like a sense of frustration with me, but I would just tell her, you know, every single day, can I, I would be by her desk every single day so I can learn, you know, um, so I can know how to do this stuff, you know. So I was just very, um, motivated to just know how to do it you know I would ask her questions I was like could you run through it with me one more time you know so I can get it you know so that's what I did and it's funny because a lot of times when I do workshops and people talk about you know I, I'm talking about phones phones is 80 if not 90 percent of an entry-level person's job because this industry is all about you know who you're talking with who you're building business with right and they are trusting you to make sure that all the people they want to talk to that they talk to and all the meetings that have to be set up that they get set and nothing falls through the cracks so you know it's one of those positions when you get the opportunity to first sit on a desk you're like oh my goodness like this is no joke this is not just hello you know no you are really like okay you're playing this one and you're politically holding this person at bay I mean it's it's a whole dynamic and so I think that probably is a very eye-opening experience for anyone who gets the opportunity to have to sit on a desk so you were gonna say something Amir yeah I was gonna add that I asked questions so you know entering my internship of course I had to use Excel and then I would say being honest also about the you know your level of skill set so I remember being asked, you know, how well, um, you know, how, um, you know, fluent I was in Excel, and I gave an honest answer, you know, I was, you know, at the time intermediate, and I knew a lot of the functions, but there's still so much more to learn in that area alone, so just being honest with, you know, your skill set level, and then when you do come across something that's challenging, don't be afraid to ask questions because then when you ask questions you show that you're engaged you're interested and that you're actually learning so I think it's very important to be able to say you learned from your internship and not that you just interned there because when you learn from it that means you're equipped to take on the next opportunity and continue progressing forward and Jay I would just ask you if you could chime in you know there's a there's a pass that you get when you're an intern they don't expect you to know everything, right? So, you know, talk a little bit about that to her question. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is we understand there's going to be a sort of catch-up time and, 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 you know, we need to give you the space and the ability to make the job your own. That's not just true of our interns. That's true of our executive assistants who come in. It's a hard job. And uh, the fact that, you know, Thanks was talking about well, I'll teach a course in four hours that it would take you know Six usually months on the job to learn. yeah so it's 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 a it's, it's a challenging job so we understand that your ability to um, ask those questions your ability to catch on as soon as you can uh, is part of our instinct in terms of why we hired you but it's interesting to note that and you referenced the agencies, there was a time when we always took resumes from people who were working at the agencies um, who were trying to get out of the agencies <laughs> and sort of come over to the creative side. And those were some of the most high profile candidates we did because two things we knew about them. Number one, that they had a lot of phone work to do and that they were sort of balancing out everything. And number two, that they were, they, they were reading a lot of scripts. Those two elements were so important in our side of the business that they became ideal candidates for us to be uh, assistants over at what we do on the creative side and even on the production side in some cases. So the, the, the desk is absolutely an important place, but most people understand how difficult it is and give you the time to sort of catch up. But you got to catch up. I mean, there's a certain <laughs> point where then it just becomes a, all right, you know, I'm missing meetings. I'm missing This is calls. not working. This is not working. <laughs> so, um, but there is that sort of uh, time where we give you to sort of to learn it and, they, and for you to ask questions. And we'd be surprised if you didn't ask questions. Yeah. I don't expect you to know it all. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Amaya Allen. I'm a freshman journalism major from Chicago. Um, coming into Howard, I had a lot of different interests, like within the communications field. I love to um, be on camera. I love to write, but I also love to like work on brands and collaborate. So, what would you say for a freshman to kind of 
narrow down my interests and kind of focus on one um, aspect of the communications field. Um, I feel like doing the internships and just trying different things will allow you to kind of figure that out. Um, I wanted to do a photography internship, but it was definitely not what I expected in certain areas. Like, I thought it was going to be very hands-on, like I'd be running around with the camera, but I was doing the logistics of it. Um, and I was planning out like how they wanted things to be shot and choosing photographers and like doing like a lot of the extra work that goes into it before they hire the photographer. And while that was really, really interesting to see how it went, that wasn't what I wanted to do necessarily. But I'm glad I had got that experience, especially because they gave me so much to do and so much more knowledge than I needed that it will be beneficial as I move forward. Um, so just trying different things because I'm a journalism major, but I love photography. I write content. I want to like you know do videos and and um, work for like bu a BuzzFeed or Essence mm -hmm. later on. But this was a great internship. So just trying different things. Okay. I would right. say. Oh, I'm sorry. And I would say that you know at some point you have to just kind of have a jump off point. Mm -hmm. You know I know I like this and I like that, I like that. But the beauty of being here on campus is kind of you get to kind of explore those things and build and see what you like, but then also you get to try an internship in this area or try something in another area, and hopefully it helps you to figure out ultimately what you want to do. Sometimes we never know what we want to do. We're constantly changing. I, was, I don't think you need to know what you want to do. Like, going in, right, you, you at least have an idea. Like, think of the things you like. One, So I, I went into a marketing internship, and I switched my major from marketing my freshman year to film and TV my second year. And because I wanted to learn more, I wanted to be in the entertainment industry, but I may I was thinking about taking like the corporate route into it. Mm. But um, now that I have done it, and I actually had that internship doing marketing, and I I've learned that like it's not really what I want to be doing for the for my career, at, at least right now. At, but I don't think it's what I want to do in, at all. But um, I would like to be on like a development track, but now that I have that internship, that experience, and have learned more about the business, I think it'll be easier to make that jump. You have a huge advantage. You have mm. Warner Brothers yeah, on your resume. Well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hello, my name is Deja Davenport. I'm a sophomore audio production major, music minor from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And my question is fairly simple. Um, my interest is more towards the music industry, so I was just wondering if ECOP offered um, opportunities for that avenue of entertainment on the music side mm -hmm. um, like producing yeah I mean you know it's funny people say music side music is entertainment it's in everything yes yeah. essentially yeah and so there are opportunities in that area right mm -hmm. you have live nation so it's universal <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. okay. So it's universally yeah. essentially. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank and you. And search the company's website. Yeah. Look at music internship opportunities. So, I mean, there's just so many ways. And, and just so you guys know, like, internships recycle, right? So what they were looking for one summer, they may be looking for again another summer. So go and look and see what the qualification requirements are so that you'll know what to, how to put yourself in a good light so that you're prepared for that opportunity when that opportunity comes around again. Mm-hmm. So hi, my name is Apoku Boateng. Um I'm a film and media uh, major from Newark, New Jersey. I'm a freshman as well. And my question was just about um, with the internship process, when you enter, I understand that they're not expecting you to um, necessarily know everything, right? But I was just asking more about the environment necessarily. Like, is it still sort of, in a sense, I guess, like, do, do they expect you to still um, have as much responsibility as if you were actually working there. Because I remember you were also talking about before that at a point you need to catch on and they will be depending on you in a sense. So what is that environment like? Oh, mm -hmm. so for the interns? Yeah, for the interns. Well, 
part of the D and D team, diversity and belonging, and I did have the same responsibility as like everybody that was a part of the team, the manager, the VP, she trusted me to create a sell documents to track merchandise counts for all the global events. She trusted me to um, plan meetings and also um, like Ashley said, act like you do work there, set up informational in uh, interviews with people that work there. I set up one with a lady, a part of the communications team, the social media team. But um, luckily for Live Nation, they give us the same responsibility as their employees. So that's great. Yeah. And she said pretty much um, everything I was thinking. Um, and then, by the way, she planned a Kid Nation event, too, which was really huge for um, Live Nation at the time. And then I wanted to piggyback off of what Ashley and Maya said, which is don't be the nervous intern. Mm -hmm. um, so me and Maya, people actually thought we worked there. They were asking, like, which department are you in? So definitely don't be the <laughs> nervous intern. I think you should definitely ask questions. And then also ask for more work, too. Um, I don't think there's any limitations on, you know, the amount of work you can do. If you can finish an assignment quick and well, ask, you know, for more work because that shows that you're truly there to, you know, get the experience and get the job done. And then also, last point um, that Maya mentioned was setting up informational interviews because then you can learn about, you know, the different parts of the company. And then that also helps you when you're preparing final presentations and, um, you know, things of that nature. Next question. Thank you. Hello, my name is Hannah Marie Childress. I'm a sports media print journalism major from Fayetteville, North Carolina. And my question, I know specifically. What's your name? Hannah Childress. Did you apply? I'm applying. I'm applying. Oh, I saw that name, Childress. So I know it's rare, but I was like, oh, I think she applied. Okay, I'm sorry. I interrupted your question. You're fine. I know for you specifically, you work for development. And when I was listening to you, you said that you read over scripts and you go to the executives to see, okay, why this might be a movie that you want to put up. Do you, does that contribute to a lot of social issues within film? And if it does, does that contribute to why it is so hard to get into the development program? Jay, you can talk about why development and creative is such a coveted area. I mean, that I mean, it is the toughest area to get it's into. It's the toughest area to get into because there aren't often a lot of jobs that come with that in our division. I mean, we have a handful of creative executives on the current side and a handful on the development side. And a company like Disney, um, there's very little turnover, you know. Um, generally speaking, uh, Netflix has changed that a little bit, um, <laughs> but um, they're covered in jobs because it's not like you have hundreds of people working in development and hundreds of people working in current series. You know, we we handle all the series that we do with probably 
eight overall executives. Development is maybe four or five in our division. Um, probably larger at some larger divisions, but uh, they're great jobs and they're hard to get. So um, and they pay really well. <laughs> so from the standpoint, sometimes. Um, so. Um, I can't remember who asked the other question. It was sort of a follow-up to, like, you know, if you don't get your job right away, it was, yeah. Um, you, you take the job <laughs> and deal with what you want later. I mean, for real. Yeah. Especially if it's, a, if it's a company that the job is somewhere in that company, uh, for sure. Because, again, as we sort of talked about before, your maneuverability within the company is going you'll find it to be a lot easier than trying to sort of maneuver around the company from the outside looking in thank you so much uh another question that i had is uh for the program itself um i don't know when the companies get involved when choosing an applicant but um as far as from the pool of applicants to finalist what is the secret ingredient or the thing that you choose when picking your finalists before the companies get involved? Is it dinner with you and your husband? And, you know, <laughs> I like this guy. It's or? all the stuff they told you they have on their resume. Okay. That's so. the secret sauce, right? It really is, you know, the experience on your resume, what you've been involved in. You know, your resume needs to sing and speak to what it is you say you want to do. Okay. Um, and then it's, you know, then it's a matter of, you know, how well is it written? How well did you articulate yourself? You know, mm -hmm. so, and then, you know, you could become a finalist, but then you bomb at the interview, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Um, so there's a lot of process involved, but really it's about all the key things that they have mentioned. Those are the things that we're looking for. Um, I'm looking for students that are ready to come in, do the work. And they're serious about it. I'm not just looking for, you know, and I can, we can smell you a mile away, um, but I'm not looking for somebody who's like, yeah, I just want to try this. It's too competitive in the industry for it to just be a try. Mm -hmm. I like, this has to be something that I see myself on a career track wanting to do, and that passion needs to somehow come across in your personal statement. It needs to be reflected in your academic commitment, and it also needs to be reflected in the work experience that you have and that you've exposed yourself to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Um, we have a little bit of time left, but um, this has been really, really good. I hope you guys have gleaned some knowledge from it, um, that you've, you know, had some takeaways, and I just hope you all apply. You cannot even be considered if you don't apply. Um, utilize your career services. Utilize your colleagues here on campus. I mean, oh my goodness, look at this. You have something you yeah, want to say? Can I say one thing? Just trust your process. It's so fun to be sitting up here with Amir. I helped him on his video portion, and we ended up in the same program. So really help out the people that are applying with you, because you never know who's going to end up there with you. Um, and it's just an amazing process. So just really just trust. Once the application is in, your gift will make one for you. That's true. Okay, before we, before, oh, okay, let me ask, do yours, and then I have a final question, okay? And then you have to be fast on it. It can't be long. It's going to be a word or a sentence. I was going to say, stay ready. Like, once you apply, like, you never know where you're going to get that call from. And if you, like, I literally was leaving with cross practice. I looked so crazy. And I got a random FaceTime call. <coughs> so I answered it. And it was the people at NPDH1, like, sitting in an office asking if I was ready to be interviewed. And I was like, uh, sure, yeah. So <laughs> I like ran into a room and like they interviewed me with like no makeup on, looking crazy, like hair, like crazy. And I, I was right. So just like stay ready, like do your research on the industry. Like you don't know who's gonna call you, so just like be ready. That's good. I love it. Stay ready. Expect. I always say stay in a mode of expectancy. So that's what I want to do. I want to leave everybody with a word of encouragement, okay? So my word to you, so we're going to leave them not with what advice you would give to your 20-year-old self because... I'm not even... Yeah. <laughs> Anywho. Um, so we're going to say a word of encouragement. So my word of encouragement is stay in a mode of expectancy and believe you can do it. Okay? Passion. Passion. I was going to say that, but purpose and drive. Um, 
optimistic because I didn't get my call um, until like a week and a day before they needed me out in LA. I didn't oh. get my call from Love Nation. Uh, um, what did I say? Optimistic. Optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say definitely be authentic. And I want to end with a quote by Satchel Page, which is work like you don't need the money, love like you've never been hurt, and dance like nobody's watching. He was an African American baseball player. Nice. Um, mine is, like I said, your gift will make room for you. And lastly, just make sure you're willing and able. Take up like soak up everything you can in these experiences um, I would say have faith in yourself Amen <laughs> yeah. I would say have faith and claim it like see it no wait, isn't it say it until you see it yeah say it until you see it like claim you're going to be in LA this summer next summer and then go do it um, I would say be passionate like be passionate about everything that you do um, in every internship that you have you know like this Excellent. I love it. You guys got good good info now. You charge, you're ready to go. We can conquer. You guys can be running the industry. Do you realize that? And do you guys realize the importance of your network right here? You guys have filmmakers, you have creatives, you got all types of components of an industry. You guys can make your own private studio. Right here, with just your colleagues. <laughs> So those are my words to you. Um, I think that is it. Hopefully we gave you a lot. Oh, but wait, wait. We have to give away some things. We have to give away some books. Oh, and we have to give away, I have a couple of HBCU in LA bags. And uh, I'm going to let Ted take that. Like we all can get in. <laughs> we all try to get in. <laughs> Yeah, it was so surreal. Because it was so funny when you got there, and I was okay. like, yeah. yeah. Because I'm trying, well, they have to. <laughs> oh, no. I had told you, like, I didn't, we got eliminated. And that's why it was so funny. It's a little bit. Have you been It's freezing. I just have to do it over here. We get there.